Stock market, I learned my lesson, no more reading my API key into memory, now there's no useful information you can leak. All right, so I've downloaded the C program, and it looks pretty similar, but they've commented out the code that read the flag into memory, so that's a little unfortunate. But we still have the same printf vulnerability. Now, unfortunately, this printf only gets called once. So we're going to want to like pack a lot into this one time that we get called. Okay. Um, so I've loaded this thing also into Ida. And let's go ahead and connect to it once. That was on port 43206, 43206. So with the printf vulnerability, I'm going to be able to leak things. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, so here what we can see is we have 10 parameters, 10 more parameters, more stuff. So I'm gonna look at these and I'm gonna to try to find the return address. And my return address is actually right here, 400C66. So I can see that if I go into main, I look at by stonks, the return address is 400C66. So I know that my return address is at parameter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So just below that will be a stack pointer. And that's important because unlike usual when I've seen uh, these printout vulnerabilities, the buffer is not on the stack. This user buff was malloc, so it's on the heap as opposed to being on the stack. So we can't just walk up and find my printf buffer on the stack. Okay, so this, however, is a pointer onto the stack. It's going to be basically where the frame pointer was at main. And that's going to be handy for us also. All right, so let's, let's look at that stack. I've sort of mapped it out for us here. We knew that that 13th parameter was the return address from by stonks in the main. The 12th parameter was the RBP in main. And so if we go into by stonks, the very first thing it does is it pushes RBP onto the stack. So main had it pushed an RBP and then it had a stack frame of 30 hex, which is 48 bytes. So since everything on the stack is eight bytes long on a 64-bit architecture, we have six of these, one, two, three, four, five, six. So counting up the RBP from main is pointing right here at parameter 20. So this is a pointer to parameter 20. Now that's gonna be important because we can then change this and then access it through parameter 20. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come up 10 parameters. In the 11th parameter, I'm going to specify that I want to have basically the address of free in the got. So the global offset table is going to, at runtime, tell it where it can find free. Right, let's just do it this way. 602.08. Right, so here is the global offset table. Here's the address of free. So I want to change that and I'm going to make it point to system instead. So this is going to change this 
where it points to, which is basically up here. And this is going to become the address of free in the God. And that happens right here. This percent in, because we've actually printed out, I mean, an enormous number of characters, right? That's what, 6.3 million roughly characters, which gets us this address. And that subtract 10 comes from here. So basically, once we've gotten to here, we've printed 602018 hex characters so that this parameter, which is right here, that address gets changed to be 602018. And so that points up here. So this is going to become 602018. All right, so now we need to actually add 216 more because that's going to change my 602018 to 602 OFO. And the reason I want it to be 602 OFO is if I look at where free is, because free hasn't been called yet, I know its God entry points to 4006C0. And I'm going to change it to be 4006F0. So I'm going to change the God entry from pointing to here to pointing here. And I only need to do one byte to do that. So this changes that very low order byte in this parameter to now be F0. So we printed out 6020 F0 characters. I've changed that God entry for free to now point to system. The next thing I want to do is I want to call system with SH. So I want to have SH with a null byte somewhere. Well, since I'm already at 6020FO, the next thing I can get to is going to be 1006873. So this is SH null byte. This doesn't matter. So that means I need another you know, 10 million characters. 10 million characters. It's sort of crazy. It lets me print this many characters. So I print 10 more million characters, and now I have printed this many characters. Okay, now if I walk up the stack right here, if I look back in that 10th entry, so just two down, just two down from my stack pointer, I mean my return address, is this. This is actually a heap pointer. That heap pointer, we know, which I think it's, no, it's this one. This is the 10th one. This heap pointer, we know from looking at by stonks, when we call pick symbol with AI, that returns to malloc thing, which gets stored 10 hex, or basically two slots, down from RBP. So that pick symbol with AI, right, is returning stonk. Stonk is a malloc thing. So that means free is gonna get called on that. And I'm gonna change free to be system. So when I call free, which becomes system, and I give it SH as what's stored there, then it will in fact do that. All right, so now I'm basically just going to send a one. I'm going to send this crazy payload, and I'm going to sit there and wait for it. So again, in summary, like my first percent in changes the got. Uh, actually, no, it doesn't change the got yet. It changes this place on the stack, which is pointed to from here, to be the address of the guy. So the first thing I change with my first percent n is this memory location becomes the address of the guy. My second percent hhn changes just one byte, modifying the got to change free to be system. My third percent n takes a heap pointer and changes it to have stored at its memory location sh null byte. So that when I call free on that pointer, I will basically say system sh. So 
Confirm stock market. We're printing crazy amount of stuff. Hope for the best. So I'm stock market three, I can cut API and there is my flag.